Here we go again with one of those long wanded pressure washers with the quick disconnect tips on the end right away. If you engineered this and you thought this was a good idea, my email's down below. Give me an email, I'm gonna talk to you about it because this is not the best idea in the world. It's not cool at all, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but what is cool is Giraffe Tools all-in-one pressure washer. I saw this and I thought, man, I gotta bring this in because I'm super into wall-mounted pressure washers. I like entry-level ones too, and this is a good entry-level pressure washer. Now, what caught my eye about this one? It is an all-in-one unit. It has a 100-foot self-retracting hose reel on it. That's really neat, just all combined into one. Another cool thing about the retractable reel, you pull it out, it stops, you use it. When you wanna put it away, retracts itself all by itself. It has a threaded rod across here, which makes the hose go back and forth and does a fairly good job at making it nice and neat. That's cool. It has a pump inside that claims to have 2200 PSI at 2.1 gallons per minute. Now my testing, it didn't show those numbers, but it showed reasonable numbers. What I found was at about 1500 PSI, maybe 1.3 gallons per minute. It's kind of similar to the Karcher and you guys that have been around with the channel, you know that I've used that a lot. Got some great results out of it. So that's reasonable pressure for auto detailing or most of the stuff you do around your house. Now, if you want to be blowing concrete clean and doing driveways and stuff like that, you're, you know, on a large scale, this will do small scale stuff. But if you want to do large scale commercial type cleaning, you're going to want to get a super high PSI, high water output gas pressure washer. But for those of you that want a really neat all in one unit that hangs on the wall, that can be brought in and out of the house uh, during the winter time to prevent freezing and all that different stuff. Stuff, this is going to be awesome. Also, it comes with a foam cannon. Is this the best foam cannon in the world? No, it's not. There's much nicer ones, but this will get the job done and you're going to see that soon too. It comes with all the hoses, uh, about a six foot power cord with a GFI on it. And all in all, it's pretty much plug and play and ready to go. You don't have to do anything. No, you don't even barely have to just screw fittings together and that is it. And uh, I found it to be leak-free fittings, easy to put together, all in all, great pressure washer. But none of that matters until we get out there and test it on the truck. You know we got to put it down out there and that's the bottom line. It's going to have to handle. But let's start by just doing a quick once over here. This sprayer, entry-level sprayer for sure. It feels plasticky. It's kind of lightweight I don't suspect it, it that it's gonna break that easy but it's definitely not that top-notch stuff that we're used to I don't like the length of this wand I feel like if you're trying to reach up on top of like an RV or pickup truck or you really need some reaching that's great you know you want this extension on here but in all in most cases I prefer to use a short gun and I'm gonna show you what um, what that's all about here in a minute but first let's go out there with a standard setup as is out of the box and give it a try. All right, so we'll start out by just spraying the truck down. Right away, I'm realizing we're getting some decent water output, decent pressure, plenty enough to do the job. So that's a good thing. Good fan on it, nice 40 degree fan. And I feel like, you know, even when I pull it away from the vehicle, I'm still getting some good water action. So I like that a lot. Let's go ahead and throw this foam cannon on and see how it works. Okay, so the foam cannon's got, you know, marginal output. It puts the foam down, it's doing okay, but is it outstanding? Not really, but again, for an all-in-one kit, it does do the job. It's gonna put the foam on the truck and it's gonna get you going where you're in the direction you're trying to go. Okay, so now let's put the 40 degree tip back on and let's go ahead and try to get this uh, truck sprayed down and see how much water. This is where the rubber meets the road. If you have really low water output, the foam and the soap is just gonna be hard and cumbersome to get off of the paint. But what I'm realizing, it's doing a good job. It's removing the soap off the paint so it's got plenty of water flow, I like it. Okay, so now there's some modifications I'd like to make to make this current setup just a little bit more user friendly. I don't need all this length with typical auto detailing. And if I do, I got a solution for that too. But right away, let's go ahead and move this extension off of here. We're gonna replace it with a quarter inch quick disconnect. So now we got a quick disconnect on here. We can go ahead and put our 40 degree tip on. 
and boom, we just minimize that gigantic wand down into something sensible. I'd like to see it down to here, but we can't do that. This is all one solid piece. So, but this is far better. This is going to do a lot better out there. Now, if I did want to still get the length for like reaching over top of some uh, far to reach stuff, I would go ahead and put this other fitting that comes in the kit right on here. And now I could just go ahead and quick disconnect and I got my length back. That's nice. Uh, so we're not eliminating the length altogether. We're just coming up with a solution to work with a much shorter sprayer here. Okay, so let's go out there now and let's go ahead and give it a try just like this. I expect very similar results, but let's do it anyway. All right, so now we're spraying it down with the shorter wand. We're getting exactly the same results, the same fan pattern, the same pressure. Everything is the same, just minus the length. So that's kind of cool. So for very economical price, you can knock this size down to a usable size. Okay, let's throw the, the foam cannon that comes with it on. Same exact results here. Thin foam, but it's covering the vehicle and doing a good job. And we're going to be able to wash it based on that amount of foam on the vehicle for sure. And let's go ahead and wash it clean with this uh, shorter setup now too. And again, we're getting the same results, good water moving, the foam is being removed from the vehicle. So all in all, huge improvement for very little modification. That's kind of cool. But is that as far as I want to take it? Absolutely not. I want to take this to the highest level possible. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove the, the spray gun altogether. I'll put this 3 8 quick disconnect onto the hose. I'll leave links to all these fittings down below so if you guys want to check them out. I kind of am interested in, in things like how do I take a reasonably priced piece of equipment and bring the user quality all the way up as high as we can and sometimes we got to use some modification fittings like this. So now we've turned this uh, standard Amazon style pressure washer hose into a quick disconnect that we can now apply our much, much higher end gun. This is the OG Spec Mosmatic uh, pressure washer sprayer. And I'll tell you what, this thing is amazing. I've done multiple videos about this, my Krenzel setup, everything about it. It just swivels super clean, super nice. It feels commercial, it's ergonomic. It's got an unbelievable tip on it. Just all in all, the user experience on this thing is a 10 out of 10 and I highly recommend it. Okay, so now let's get out there and let's try it with this one. Okay, so right away I'm noticing that we're getting a great fan out of this. Much more water moving. There's a larger orifice in here. So you can hear the pump working a little bit harder. It's putting more water out and less pressure. Now we're checking in at about 1,000 PSI and we've probably upped the gallons per minute a little bit. We're probably at 1.5 now, I would think. Um, so that's a good thing. We got good water movement. Let's go ahead and throw a foam cannon on. Is it going to be the cheap one? No, I don't really want to see that one again. <laughs> we're going to put the MJJC Foam Cannon Pro on here and we're going to see if this thing can dance. So let's go ahead and throw the MJJC on. Oh man, there we go. Now we're getting some foam. This is some good thick foam too. This isn't just average foam. I'd say this is above average. Uh, look at that amount of foam hanging on that paint. That's more than enough. Everybody can enjoy that. Okay, so we'll take the foam cannon off. And before we do that, I just wanted to say we did use the Adams Mega Foam in there and that always gets great results. Um, let's go ahead and throw the 40 degree uh, OG Spec Mosmatic tip on there and now you're starting to see, man, this is really moving some, uh, some foam off the car. The water is just pouring out of it and we're getting some good action here. So all in all, this upgrade here I find is like, I, I would almost make an upgrade like this no matter which pressure washer you decide to get, Sanjo, Karcher, whatever. I feel like me out there on the paint. This is, this is what I'm touching. This is what I'm using. I want to see the beautiful fan. I want the ergonomics. I want the good feel, the commercial experience. The pressure washer is sitting over there. I don't have to look at that every two seconds, but the entire detail, I'm hands-on with this and I want that experience good. So all in all, I feel like 
The upgrades I would make would be to throw a good sprayer on there. I'll put two um, solutions down there. I know that this is, this is kind of expensive. It's worth every penny, but not everybody wants to pay that kind of money. So I'll put a lesser model down there too that I find to be really good um, user experience as well. I do highly recommend bringing that user experience up. I mean, just throw in like a $10 sprayer head on there. That's not where we're going. Not on this channel. <laughs> not on this channel. I'm sorry. But so let's talk about the things I liked and the things I didn't like. I do like the all-in-one pressure washer. This is really going to be useful for a lot of people. Let's say you live somewhere cold and you, you want it outside. That's great, but now it gets down the freezing level. You just take it off the mount, bring it into the house in a heated area in your basement, whatever, and you're sitting pretty until uh, summertime comes again. With a wall-mounted unit like the Krenza, uh, you'd have to winterize this, empty out the hose. There would be several things you would have to do to make that work, but this is just on and off the wall really easy. That's neat all-in-one it's going to be an all-in-one package for those of you that don't want to get into the engineering and work with tons of fittings and try to make parts all fit and everything work and do a full-blown installation and find you know everything that goes into a complicated system like this that by by the way is well worth your effort uh, this is going to be a turnkey solution for you that's cool i also like the fact that um that the pressure washer reel self winds back in and it does a reasonable job. Now, does it feel like a Cox hose reel? No, it doesn't. It's never going to feel like this. You guys know I love this system. It's insane. If you want to walk in your garage and look at this every day and go, man, that thing is sick, <laughs> then this is going to be for you. That's what I do. Ever since the day I bought this, I walk past it and I'm like, Man, that thing is sick. <laughs> but you're going to say this is pretty cool too. Now let's talk about the things I don't like about it. After I pulled the trigger, it had about a two to three second rundown as it was. I can tell that the pressure switch in here is not as sensitive as maybe it is on the Krenza. The Krenza, as soon as you let go of the trigger, it shuts off. And as soon as you pull the trigger, you're at 100% uh, pressure immediately. This one, I felt like it had a rundown of a few seconds and then it would make like a hard kind of dunk and turn off. And then when you hit the uh, trigger again, it turned back on effectively. But all in all, that, that sensitivity on the pressure switch was just no, nowhere near the quality of the Krenza. And why would it be? That's a thousand dollar pressure washer. But um, so I didn't care for that. And I, I kind of wonder with these companies, why not actually measure the amount of water that comes out of the unit? Now, I found right away with my testing that this is about 1.3 uh, gallons per minute with the standard setup, and it might have got up to 1.5, 1.4 with my modified upgraded rig on it, but it's not 2.1. This is 2.1. This is not 2.1. But does it need to be 2.1? No, it doesn't need to be 2.1. You can get great results. So I would say, why not just say what the results are, knowing that there are plenty for what most people need? That's my thought on that. The pressure, we don't want 2200 PSI anyway. 2200 PSI is, you know, you can blow emblems off and, and if you have a chip in the paint, you can actually t make it worse. So I, I'm not a fan of huge pressure. I want much more than a hose can put out, but not enough to do any damage. So that's my thought on that. Another thing that I guess could be something that would be considered not as likable as maybe a top of the line pressure washer. It, was, it had some noise to it. I would say equal to Sanjo, Karcher, you know, the list goes on and on and on. Ryobi, all those, it's about the same uh, sound as, as those. But when you compare it to a much commercial, higher grade pressure washer, it, it appears to be a little noisy. I didn't notice it being noisy enough to cause problems with neighbors or disturb anybody in the house or anything like that. So you're gonna get away with using it just fine, but just keep in mind it's not whisper quiet like a Krenzla would be. Okay, so that's pretty much all I got to say about the Giraffe Tools all-in-one pressure washer. I, I give this a, a reasonable rating. I, I would prefer to use this over most of the ones I see out there. You guys don't see me bringing in all the junky pressure washers from Home Depot and everywhere else. I mean, I, I, it's not that they're not good enough to use, but I'm kind of a fan of like, 
Here, here's my list of, of order. If I was to go get a pressure washer right now, this is my thought. Entry level pressure washer, Karcher K1700 cube, 130 bucks. It's gonna do an unbelievable job all day long for at least a year and even into the future more than that. I, I did a video about that. Look in the, in the description down below and you'll see pressure washer videos. Check that out. If you want an ec economical solution, on the, on the cheaper side, that's the one. Next step up, Active. Active makes a good pressure washer. I haven't brought one in yet, because everybody else has done the review, and, and, and we all agree it's a decent pressure washer, but again, it's a non-serviceable unit. It's got a life expectancy, one, two years. Who knows how long? It's not serviceable. It's got a little bit of extra noise to it, but it starts to get some good output. We are starting to get up into the higher gallons per minute and good pressure coming out of it. If I was gonna go one step higher than that, I would recommend the AR Blue. That's decent, but it looks like a suitcase, and it, you know it's got fittings sticking out everywhere and hoses that don't make sense and directions I don't like so um, but it's gonna give you the good numbers it's good quality it's it's much quieter it's it's a higher uh, performing unit for sure you get to the top end of the game and now you're talking about Krenza you know people can agree to disagree on this this thing purrs like a kitten it's super quiet it's got unbelievable output it's fully serviceable it looks insane and every time I walk by it I think to myself I am super glad I got that thing. <laughs> and you would be too, trust me. Don't kid yourself. <laughs> but all in all, where does this fit into that mix? For the person that doesn't want to get out here and build a system, doesn't want to order a hose or this or that and try to piece everything together, if you just want it to show up in a box and you plug it into the wall and put a hose to it and get some decent results, you're going to like this. That's my thought on it. All right, so we'll see you on the next one. Oh, yeah! I try to make it so you guys, I try to make it so you guys can have some options here. I don't, you know, most people look at this big thing and think, man, that thing sucks. Well, I don't want that. So I thought maybe this would work. And then I'm thinking for the people to think, nah, that sucks too. <laughs> then I think, well, that don't suck. <laughs> and now you're in business, so.